Okay, <clears throat> so I'm trying to guide you a little bit, uh, demonstrate some of what you can do uh, with Haddock. Also, I intend to show you where to find information and when to find all kind of tutorials that you can run on your own. Let me start sharing my screen. Okay, I'll answer to a question that was asked during after the talk, comparison with other docking software. So you see here FlexX, black, surface, light blue, gold, dark blue, glide, orange, and the shape and pharmacoform uh, results, so shape will be green. Remember that for the Flex, surf, flex, gold, and glide, these are bond docking results. So they are national changes. You take the crystal structure of the complex, you just separate the molecule and try to dock it again. While for the haddock results, the shape and the pharmacophore one, we generated conformation of the ligands from smile strings from scratch, and we're using a conformation of the receptor, which is not the crystal structure of the complex. But what is the quality of the best model generated, irrespective of scoring? In unbound docking, in this scenario, you see that uh, our shape protocol is repetitive uh, with the other ones that are bound. So we're not comparing the same thing. And if you look top one performance, uh, the shape one is just percent. Unbound docking, uh, gold and uh, uh, glide are reaching just 5%. So I think that should make clear that uh, if you can find template, this is really a competitive uh, uh, protocol. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm going to uh, guide you a bit to uh, the sources that we have at hand, and we're going to do a sub portal. So at least I'm going to do a submission. You can follow the steps, and you can also look at the results, and then I'll, uh, take a look at, at things together. You will find a lot of information on our uh, group page, which is bonvalab.org. And here you find, uh, well, I mentioned the software. So if you go to software, you will find Haddock, uh, 2.4 version, initial production version. We are working Haddock 3, which is a new complete rewrite of Haddock, uh, which will be modular. So you can cut the protocols, uh, but this is changed. So I will not recommend to use that one, but this is, uh, you can go to the repository, it's fully open. For now, 2.4 is our official version. But, uh, so you can find also all kinds of interesting software, uh, tools, the use of ad hoc, PDB tools for uh, uh, working with PDB files, modifying them, uh, and other uh, tools, data sets, if you are more into, you know, optimizing function so you're interested so we have a lot of uh, models that we generated by docking for different type of comp uh, which are basically which can be uh, used if you are into machine learning and things like that and the link is in the chat if you are searching where i'm just going to go to the software page of haddock just show you the man there is an online manual you can find a lot of, uh, of tips, preparing PDB files for docking, defining restraints, uh, defining all kinds of restraints that uh, I uh, shortly uh, Project setup parameters, what are the meaning of the different options? A lot of parameters that you can change in ad hoc if you know what you are doing. Frequently asked questions, uh, analysis, scoring, what is the scoring function? Uh, and important, if I go back just to the they also have a best practice guide. So if you're going to use ad hoc and you've never used it before, uh, wise to take a look at this best guide, something we wrote under Bio Excel actually. And uh, so, so how do you prepare structures for ad hoc? Uh, how to use information? What kind of system are you docking? So you can see small molecules. We also support peptides, nucleotides, proteins, Graining. So for each of those, there might be some input that you can find there. Um, how to analyze the doc? So really, it's a 
recommended that you take the time to look at that if you want to use the software. Now, if you are interested in learning to use the software better, you should visit our education webpage because this is where you're going to find tutorials. Uh, there's related to courses that we are giving here in Utrecht. There are also recording of some of our lectures, like the Bar Excel Summer School this year, where there are say, two lectures of about 45 minutes. And then we have this tutorial section. Again, the best practice guide is here, and we have the tutorial for Haddock version 2.4. See that tutorial for the previous version of Haddock, which also Excel associated with that. But the server is going to be discontinued probably uh, at the end of this year. Tutorials for other uh, related topics, being some of the summer school uh, tutorials that uh, we've been doing. So let's take a look at Haddock 2.4. Now, if you want to uh, install Haddock locally, uh, you can do that following this uh, installation tutorial, which will uh, guide you through different scenarios, how to work in. And then we have uh, different uh, tutorials going from rather simple. So this will be the most simplest, uh, the simplest tutorial, basic protein, protein doc, NMR data. Uh, we have a tutorial demonstrating the use of cross-link data from mass spectrometry. Um, in this tutorial here, we are trying to an oligomeric puzzle. Actually, the, the answer to that is not in the tutorial. This is something I'm using in detail, uh, where you are trying to base on cross data to figure out if you are dealing with a dimeric, trimeric, tetrameric, or pentameric system. Uh, we have done work in a, on doing template-based modeling of protein-protein complexes, where you can derive C alpha, C alpha, from homologous complexes and use those modeling. So this is what this tutorial is about. Here you find a tutorial based on the previous Capri target, at 70, where you are doing uh, T-body symmetrical docking without any information except for the symmetry of a homo tetramer. Here you find a small molecule binding site. This is against a large receptor. Actually, it's a transmembrane receptor where in first instance, Assume we have no knowledge of the binding sites and we do docking tire surface, do a statistical analysis of the contacts that are made to predict binding sites, then target a specific binding site. So if you remember the talk, I told you that we had different scenarios for small molecule docking. So this will be an illustration of the first, or at least the second stage when you do a, a, you set up the docking targeting the identified binding pocket. It's probably not the best way to do small with ad hoc, if you, the, the shape-based more protocol is way better, but this is illustrating that protocol. Uh, we have a brand new shape restraint all molecule docking tutorial, which is basically illustrating the tutorial, the, the, the protocol that we just published and mentioned in my talk. And this is what I want to take you through today, bits of it, because uh, this is more complex to run into a, uh, only one hour. I also show you in my talk uh, the antigen docking, and uh, we have a tutorial to do that. Uh, different type of data, no information on the antigen, so you take the entire surface or using information on, on the antigen, so it's more directed docking. And finally, speak about, mem well, I gave you an example of membrane pro so published uh, recently this year, a paper where we combine light dock as docking engine as refinement engine to model membrane proteins. And this is uh, uh, illustrating how to do that. So these are the tutorials that we have uh, on to point you uh, <clears throat> to <clears throat> courses and the structural bioinformatic and model master course that I'm giving in Utrecht. But this comes with an extensive tutorial, which consists of three parts doing homology modeling. So here we use Swiss model. Uh, in uh, the latest version of the tutorials to run molecular dynamic simulation of a peptide using Gromax, where we describe all the setup and all the analysis. And, and then we set up protein peptide. So we don't have a protein peptide tutorial in a list of tutorials, but you find one here, since some of you are on uh, peptides. And um, actually, so this tutorial is using, uh, to run Gromax, we use uh, virtual machines, VMs, cloud machines, that you can access at MMR box. So again, 
interested, uh, lots of information there and lots of tutorials that you can run at your own uh, on your site. So, so for today, what I want to do is to go into this shape restraint protein small model. We're going to do more drug design like, so I want to reduce a particular one. So, uh, Uli, you are following me a little bit. So all our tutorials are organized in a similar way that you find on the board website. Uh, so this one, we're going to do this template-based shape restraint modeling of a protein's ligand cones. Okay, we're going to use the, the website details of the paper. Well, this is the preprint pointing to bioarchive, but uh, the paper is not published. And what is important, all our tutorials have these guidelines. So we are we use a color coding to uh, <clears throat> define actions that you, you following the tutorial should do. So orange will be used, so you should think about it and try to answer it. Blue is an instruction, so you need to do something. For example, inputting, uploading data to the web portal. Green we use for PIMAL, so to, for visualization of the, of the molecules. This could also be camera in some tutorials where we, have, uh, where we use uh, MS or EM data, we use camera for that. And black will be a Linux prompt command. So something that you will not need to type at the Linux level. A lot of tutorials where you don't need at all to use the Linux, uh, the command line level, so you can do everything. Uh, basically, you don't depend on the operating system. So we we'll spy more and further the web portal. Now for these particular tutorials, if you want to basically run it on your own, uh, have all kind of, we, have, we are providing a TAR archive which contains all the data and actually pre-generated data that you can do the submission. So if you want to do that, you should download this file by clicking on here. And I did that already. And this file on my desktop, you see it here, shape small model. Okay. You also need for this tutorial, since we're doing a lot of small molecule work, you will need to install where so we, we we use open babel tools we are the kit so i think it's too much uh, to ask for for today during the, the time of the tutorial if you do it on your own when you have the time download the file now you will have all the data that you need to upload to the server so we are basically providing data that have been calculated for for several steps okay you will see this tutorial also uh, uses pdb tools basically now if uh, wanted to really do a submission, a real submission, I should register for accessing Haddock. And what we have here is some of what Haddock is doing. Uh, you can find the movie you in my presentation about the docking process. So, but you are not, you are not all experts since to the presentation. So what are we going to do today? So we want to model the binding of uh, <clears throat> this particular molecule that you see here uh, to a protein. So that's part of, a, it's one of the complex in a DUDE data set and it's actually a PDB ID 1D3G. Protein, you see at some cofactor associated with it, those molecules, and we are going to dock this particular one, okay? So this is the binding site. So we have smaller molecule in, in a receptor than, than just the link. And the protocol that we're going to follow is this shape restraint protocol. The Tutorial also demonstrates the, the use of microphore based protocol, but we won't have time for that today. So the steps basically that we need to follow. So first we are identify and download potential templates of interest for target of choice. Again, this, this protocol only works if you can identify in a PDB uh, some complexes of the of your receptor of choice, which has some other ligand associated with it. And often for say drug targets, you will find quite a lot of information. If there is nothing in a PDB uh, related to your particular protein, of course, you cannot follow this protocol. So you should go back to the more Binicio ligand docking one that I uh, show you as one of our tutorial. So once we have identified all the possible templates, we will have to select the best template for the particular ligand that you want to dock prepare the file for the docking, do the docking and analyze the data. 
Now, how do we apply templates? <clears throat> we do that uh, by using, uh, uh, by the way, if you, if you read the, uh, there's a link to a Git repository where all the scripts are provided. So you can do a lot of this uh, in a more automated fashion. So in this protocol, to identify templates, we need to RCSB, the protein that, and use the advanced search uh, that will allow you to basically retrieve all PDB entries. In this case, we want to use this. So you need to provide a sequence of your target. So we use a sequence information of 1D3G. And we want to only retrieve targets that have 100% identity. Okay, so that's, uh, I can demonstrate that. I open this link in a new tab. See now I'm RCSB. Increase a little bit. So I'm interested. I want to provide a sequence. And the PDB is 1D3. G, if I'm correct. On D3G, yes. Okay, and you specify here that you want only to look at all the entries in the PDBs that have 100% identity. Okay. And if you do this, you click on search. Search. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's see. Oh, PDB. Yes. I'll click 100%. So now the sequence is uploaded. Search. Uh, okay. Three trees. Now you, you, you start getting a list of all the related entries that have different ligands. Okay. So it's possible to download. Uh, from the PDB file, uh, basically a file that contains all the data. Okay, and of course, if you have downloaded the data from the tutorial, since the PDB is constant, be that what you download today will be different than what we are providing here in the, in the tutorial. Okay, so you want to generate a port using the ligand preset and save it in CSV format. And show you what that looks like. So I'm here. Terminal. I have all the software uh, related for to this tutorial. We are looking at data. You can CSV. That's the file that I'm saying. And what you see here is basically a list where you find the the PDB and here a lot of information about the ligands. In File string, but there's also the in key, key and, and different molecular weight formula, all of that. We are interested here in the in the smiles. So this is basically what the search in a PDB returns. So a lot of different ligands for these proteins that have 100% sequence identity to your target, but they have different ligands. Okay. Um, and we only want uh, the protein itself contains also this uh, two. So we want uh, to keep the entries that have those cofactors, but also other ligands. <clears throat> and you don't want to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you don't want to keep, uh, there's also sometimes crystallization junk that you are getting out of the PDB. Because when you crystallize structure, there might be all kinds of small molecules in the buffer that will come and that are part of the crystal structure. So you really want to look at entries that have ligands in the pockets that you are targeting. Now, this uh, in the data set that we are providing for the tutorial, this has been uh, provided here. So this is this filtered file ligands filtered .csv. Uh, now we want to select the template basically and which one of all the ligands in this list uh, is the most similar to the ligands that we have to, uh, to dock. And for this, we're going to calculate the similarity between our target ligand and the ligands that we found in a PDB using the Tversky coefficient, uh, which compute basically the maximum substructure. And we use the RD kit implementation for that. Okay. So uh, we provide, uh, so basically, uh, the small strings from, uh, from this list that you downloaded, and you only output uh, basically the, the, the PDB 
ID and, and information about us we're going to get this file. So this file again is provided in the data. So I don't need to run this command. I'm just going to show you what is the content. So you see here now you have the smile strings of all those ligands, which is a one-dimensional string describing the chemistry of the ligands. And then you have the name of the PDB file where you find these ligands and the name of the ligands in that PDB entry. It's B5 O that you see here, the name of the ligand in that particular entry. So that's what we have here. So now we have uh, calculate what is the, the basically the maximum common substructure. So the, in the tutorial, we have a script to, to give you that. Uh, and then you create basically the, the, the Tversky metric, okay? And this is going to give you the, uh, the similarity of the ligands to your target, similar, uh, to your target uh, ligands. So let me just show you what's in there, similarities. So now you see, we have calculated the similarity of the different ligands. So you have here the PDB ID of the template. You have the name of the ligand in that particular PDB and the similarity to your target ligand. So if it's exactly the same, the value will be one. And they are, this file is sorted. So you see here that there are two entries that have very high similarity to the ligand that we want to dock. They are not exactly the same, but they are highly similar. And the higher the similarity, the better the docking results are going to be. So this is also demonstrated in a paper. So you see, actually, you have about six templates for which the similarity is 0.7, and then it drops to 0.5 and lower. And some, some of these are really very dissimilar point it bad. So I'm good. So if you want, so, so the top two, uh, so you see here the, the, the similar, the two of two ligands. So there is, uh, again, 2PH and 7K2U. So they are very similar, 956.942, very similar. So then you have to also, if you're going to, you have to make a choice. So what is important here, uh, you know, it's not black and white, of course. Um, check the quality of the structure itself. So if you compare the structure, the resolution of the second one, which is slightly less similar, is 1.72. And the other one is 2.4. So that's one good argument to select one for the other. Further, the, the top rank structure is also in some loops in some region of the structure, which might here there is a break while here the loop is going around here. So this is also going to basically, if do further molecular dynamics with those structure, you probably want the structure which has the, the highest similarity, okay? So what is high similarity? So again, in the, so if I look now, the seven two, I'm going to load the one D three G So this is what we are targeting, what we want to reproduce basically. And this is not a template that we would select based this is that we have done now. I'm going to align. So now you see alignment of the two molecules. These are the cofactors, okay? Uh, this is crystallization buffer. These groups that are part of the crystallization buffer. So it's all to do modeling that you should look at what is in a crystal structure or the PDB file that you are using. There's a around it, these are the crosses. Here, the ligand that we are interested in, and you see close to that, there's also some other molecules so this is 
So this is what we want to, to generate basically, and this is what we select. Okay. The similarity in terms of threshold 0.946, so it's very similar. There are some differences in this region here, and there are and these aromatic rings, but otherwise it's quite similar. So it should be quite obvious that if we use this ligand as a shape to guide the dock, we should get very good results. So basically, uh, it's like when you do protein prediction, you can find an homologous structure, you're going to use that homologous structure rather than do an ab initio prediction of your protein. Now we do the same, but now for small molecules. The ligand that we are interested in, and you see close to that, there's also some other molecules. So this is so this is what we want to, to generate basically, and this is what we select. The similarity in terms of threshold 0.946, so it's very similar. There are some differences in this region here, and there are see in these aromatic rings, but otherwise it's quite similar. So it should be quite obvious that if we use this ligand as a shape to guide the dock, we should get very good results. So basically, uh, it's like when you do protein prediction, you can find an homologous structure, you're going to use that homologous structure rather than do an ab initio prediction of your protein. Now we do the same, but now for small molecules. So we have identified our which is 7K2U. Uh, now, if you're doing modeling and general, everything that you do with Haddock, uh, it could be, especially for structure that have high uh, that you might have multiple conformations of some side chains. And then the software will not know what to do with that because you have a side chain existing in two conformations. Um, so you have to, to or inspect the file and on which conformation you want to use, or you can automatically basically extract uh, only the most conformations. And we have developed the PD tools for that. It's also available as a web portal, so you can run this as a web uh, directly on, on a server. But if you install it locally and we use it all the time, basically um, run a command. So this is going to select only the most populated uh, conformations, double occupation. Uh, we keep only a couple of the PD files. We want to remove the crystallization junk. So these are those ones, water, and then we generate a template. So I actually copy paste this comment just to show you that this is not junk, but it's so my directory except for the data. And if we look at what's the difference, so this is not a template. You see that I don't have any crystallization junk. I don't. I still kept the cofactors, and I have my template ligands here, which is not the ligand we want. It's the most similar ligand that we selected. Okay. Now we need not to generate this shape, so we need to transform this uh, information to a shape. So we're going to. So so the name of ligand is VU seven. Uh, so we take that one, and here we have a simple script to shape, which basically rename the atoms of the ligands to what we call bead fake atoms. So what is in this shape file? So for ad hoc processes, you see the, the residue name is SHH for shape, and the atom name is shape. Each atom is a separate residue number. Shape, which consists of 30 atoms. If I look at while in PyMol, basically what you are seeing now is it's basically a three-dimensional shape. Okay, it's still in the orientation that we find in the templates. We have to maintain these orientations in the docking. That's another. And uh, of course, we want to use the template, the receptor for the dock. We want to have the ligand in there, otherwise the docking is not going. So I want to uh, remove the ligand, and now what I have here. So I have the template that, which is ready, I have my shape, which is ready for docking. But what I don't have is my ligands. So now we need to generate formations for the ligands and we need to worry about conformational changes, okay? 
So we go to the kit for this, starting from a small. And uh, if you have installed everything properly as instructed in the setup of the tutorial, you can use this uh, script, uh, Python script, to generate uh, the conformers. So I'm going. The script is provided with the data you download. The the small string of the task we are docking is provided in data. So this is the command. So I'm going to do this conformer generate live. Always key. I just run RD script, and what has been generated is this file conform. So what is in this file? So we have now an ensemble of conformers. So you see model one, the name of the items, model two, model three, and model. So we have a number of conformers. In this case, we have 16 conformers that were generated. Conformers that you generate might depend also on the version of RDK because it's changing. So if I look at this, what's in there? Oh, that has conformer. It's interesting, it isn't used. Uh, stick. And issues here. Let me try to load the one from the data directory. It's just the relation issue, but it seems that PyMol doesn't display it. So here you see the one that we pre-generated. And you so you can realize that there's not so much conformational viability in this, but you can see maybe around those bonds here, there may be some variation and here. And if I play PyMol as a movie here, so these are the there are 16 conformations in this one. And basically, you see the, the amount of uh, viability. So each conformation is slight. So instead of docking with one thing, we, we give to add up this ensemble of conformation. <clears throat> I'm just trying to figure out what's wrong with the one that we just generated. Well, it's the con well, the connect statement seems to be messed up that are the key generated. So if we remove those, then you see more this displaying those properly. This is the one that I just generated. So we have uh, actually this is the that run. Okay, that I forgot to run in the tutorial. So everything is fine. So we have now an ensemble of conformations. We have the shape and we have the template. So now we need to restrain to generate the restraints to the to guide the docking process. So basically what we want to do is to, uh, so, so there are fewer atoms in the target compounds than in the shape. So we're going to define the restraints from the target to the shape. If your shape is smaller than the ligand that you dock, so you have less in the shape than the ligand that you dock, then you should rather define the restraints from the shape to the, uh, to the ligand. If there are questions at any start, any time, just uh, do pull uh, during the chat in, in the chat. So I see we still have a minutes. Okay, so we can generate the restraints for the shape. So So this is the format that ad hoc takes to define restraints. It's a CNS slash expo format. So from all atoms of the ligands, and we'll have chain ID B, and the shape is basically defined a distance restraints to segment S. And this is an ambiguous restraint. So it means that atom should overlap with one of the atom of the shape. It can be any one. We don't specify which atom because we... So this is a set of restraints, which is we're going to adopt it. Since the, uh, the template contains two cofactors, you should also generate restraints to maintain those cofactors because they might start moving as well. So this is recommended in ad hoc uh, uh, that we do those. So this would be this one.
and basically two files, one file per type of restraints. And now I'm combining those two files into one. And what you need, these are now very specific distance restraints, two atoms. So this is a classical distance restraint. And you see that there is a, uh, so this is the distance that as we measure in a PDB file and it has an upper bound of, uh, of one angstrom in this case. So we just want to basically keep uh, the, the ligand position. So now we have everything we need to set up the docking. So we have the template structure, clean. We have an ensemble of conformation for the, that we want to dock and we have restraints to guide the docking. Let me close some questions. So now we're going to go to the dock uh, server, provided you have registered. Or we go to Haddock 2.4. So now you are in the Haddock portal. I'm already logged in the portal, so I can log in. Otherwise, you will have to log in uh, before you can do any submission. Uh, there are different interfaces to the server. Uh, the regular submission interface is this submit, or if you go here, submit a new job. Uh, Refinement interface, if you just want to refine a complex, so you don't docking, you just want to uh, uh, to refine a complex. And as you will see, when you get a file, you get a, there's a JSON file created that can parameter all your data. And if you want to repeat the same docking run, you can resubmit that file, or you can edit or change some parameter and submit it again. It's useful when you want to, to do multiple runs, just changing a few parameters, especially if you have to change a lot of parameters don't have to go through all the menus again. Uh, from here, you find, uh, uh, OK, there's a registration button, submissions to our tutorial page, uh, the bottom where you can ask or search for answers. I, uh, someone was asking about the factors. Uh, so you can find uh, the nodal cofactors, the modified amino acid. You can find the links here. Now, someone is asking number of molecules. Uh, so for virtual screening, it, it's pretty, it's not what you want to do because uh, you will have, well, you know, if you have press, but it's, uh, you can automate, if you go to the Git repository, look up the paper, you can automate a lot of the search, of course, but I will not uh, recommend these kind of calls for virtual screening. I think they are better small molecules to, to if you want to screen 1 million of compounds. Uh, in principle, a docking to do here if you have a say a full node will probably complete in five to ten minutes depending while they are pre-processed processing but it's not going to be a, a taking a huge time but you know 10 times 1 million becomes a large number unless you have 1 million nodes the resources and then you can do uh, that in 10 okay so that's more uh, I think you, you should see this protocol more as a way of uh, if you are really Further down the pipeline, you want to generate uh, maybe more reliable models to start doing structure-based drug design, things like that. That's where it will be useful. So for virtual screening, use the classical small molecule tools. So we're going to submit a new job. So to give a, so it's a preschool, shape, whatever. You should not use a, Character to uh, to Linux like space and dollar ever will uh, tell you that that's not a good idea if you do that. Uh, molecules I mentioned Haddock can go up to twenty. In this case, we have three molecules. We have the protein, the receptor, we have the ligands, and we have the shape. So I have to set it to three. You do that basically. There is a third molecule input field that appears. So we have molecule one, molecule two, molecule. And then for each molecule, uh, and submit. You see the server gives you an option to download it directly from the PDB. That's probably an option that we should from the server because if you download it from the PDB, all the cofactors, all the crystallization junk, all the water molecule will be kept. And this might give you trouble in the dock. So it's always recommended that you look at the structure before you do the docking. So we are submitting it. Uh, we are going 
all chains, it's clean, but you could select a specific chain. So let's find this file. It's in, it was my template that I generated, upload. And uh, this is a protein, or it's a protein containing small ligands, actually, in this case, cofactors. What I want to do here is to fix the molecule in its orientation, because this has to be done also for the shape. So the, the, the shape that we derive comes from the sector. And if we start uh, moving around or doing random rotations prior to docking, then the shape does not match the binding site anymore. So in this example, we, we fix the molecule. Okay, so this is basically number of molecule, fixed molecule. Next step is to input the ligand. So for the ligand, we're going to use this ensemble of conformers, and we have to tell the server that this is, so this is molecule two. Let's follow this one. Molecule two, select. So these are my conformers. This is the one that, uh, the clean one. Uh, this is a ligand only, and you see here all the different types of molecules that we are supporting. And peptide glycans, I didn't speak about oligosaccharides. We do support oligosaccharides, nucleic acid, protein, nucleic acid, and shape. Uh, so this one is a ligand. One, we don't want to fix it in space because we will have to, to dock it. And the last one that we're getting, so we're selecting now the shape which is here, upload, and this is a shape. And it's fixed automatically, and importantly, the shape uh, segment ID or chain ID for docking, which is called S. It's important that the restraints at the point, if you see again your shape, rest uh, sorry, well, it's important that the restraints that you define match the chain definitions that you give to the portal shape as chain S, the ligand as chain B. And if you don't match these, these trends will not be read properly. So this is, you can also see that you can, uh, the, the, you have an option here to define the or the charge state of the termini of your protein. You have, often what you have in the PDB is not the full sequence that was used for the experiments, but only the part that you, the density, meaning that the end in a PDB file might the real end of your molecule. And for that reason, by default, we have uncharged termini, but you can override that. I'm ready. Click on next. So now some validation took place. Haddock calculated the protonation state of, if you find CCD, it has generated parameters for the ligand. Uh, you could select here residues that define the binding pockets, but we don't need that. Uh, what you can see here, what is also is a histidine protonation step. So Haddock has identified that you have all those histidines uh, system, and actually they are defined as uncharged. So this is there are three states for histidines that can uh, be possible. One is the so there are protons on the two nitrogen on the ring, or they are neutral histidines, and in the neutral histidine you can put the proton on the delta position or on the and in this case, based on the mole probit uh, output, all the histidine of uh, his E state. Now we don't do any do anything here, so we go to the next stage. Since uh, things were ligands, uh, we have automatically changed parameters on the portal uh, to ligand recommended parameters. So we have. So we now have seven, okay? So actually input parameters uh, is uh, what we just did on step eight. So now we need to upload the distance restraints to the same. So there are different ways of uploading restraints. So you have ambiguous and an ambiguous restraints, but these are just names. Since we have two sets of restraints, we're going to use that ambiguous. I'm going to give the shape restraints. You could even combine those files into one. You see here B and S. Upload. And as unambiguous restraints, I'm going to give the cofactor restraints to maintain the cofactors in their proper location. Upload. We don't need restraints. For small molecule docking, we recommend to keep all hydrogen atoms. For protein, 
docking by default we remove those because had often united atom uh, model so we don't need the uh, it's only removing by the way the non so we keep all hydrogens that will have a partial charge i told you that to deal with bad data or false positive we exclude uh, 50 percent of the info in this case we don't need to do that we have the shape which is which is quite good so we turn off this option note that again that depending on your access level when you the first time you will get easy access level and you might not be able to change all those parameters to change more advanced parameters you should request for higher level access and you can do that in your own registration page so we have defined the risk so this is all good so now we want to change the sampling okay so we have 16 conformation of our ligand in this case uh, so we're going to sample each conformation so we want to generate 20 times 16 so this is 320 uh, models for okay So I go to the sampling. So the server allows you to modify probably 500 different parameters. If you don't know what you are doing, don't start changing parameters. Sometimes when you hover over parameters, it will give you some information on what it is. So number of to dock default thousand, which will be 10,000 sampling. So we here do 320. And since we, so something that the server does by default also, when we generate uh, a model after rigid body docking, we automatically rotate by 180 solution and reminimize it because we realize that often you get symmetrical solutions that are difficult to distinguish. Uh, in this case, since we have very specific, you don't want to do that. Also, for small molecule docking, uh, we recommend to stop the protocol after flexible refinement stage. So you don't want to do the final refinement turn that off that's this option here uh, also if you remember the view of the binding site it's rapid binding site so we need to penetrate inside the protein to, uh, to facilitate that we scale molecular interactions for the rigid body docking to only one pro meal of the total so this is in the interaction energy and interaction parameters scaling of interactions for the rigid body docking. Zero one. Okay. And because of that option, we also need to change the scoring function because this will generations of more clashes. For this reason, we should put the Van der Waals energy term at IT zero for the scoring to zero so that we don't penalize clashes at this stage be refined away anyway and in this case uh, so we know to do any analysis of the results but basically setting the analysis to non what we're going to what the server is going to analyze is the top the top 10 model done by the docking so we don't do any clustering of solution case and with that we are ready to submit so i can click on submit button not COVID related, your job has been successfully processed and now it... Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left. Uh, so as the job is going to start running, press based on the number of models, mention this one file, which is uh, always recommended, uh, I'm always recommending it you to save it, is this JSON file. So we can have a look at it so this is a text file that contains all the parameters uh, that takes so there are many more parameters here than what you have seen through the interface but for example we should be able to the the number of structure which was uh, 320 here is another parameter that we change in the portal this was this intermolecular interactions for for it zero that we set to one if you say, well, this was not a good choice, I should have set this to 0 0.01, you can see edit this file and upload it to the, uh, the interface of the server, file submit interface. You don't have to re-enter uh, all the data in all the... 
And what you find in there are not only the parameters, you find here the histidine, by the way, but you also find the original PDB files that you submitted. So this contains all the data that you see. So this is the protein. Then you find here the models. So, the, so this is the, the sample of models for the ligands. And if I go down, I should find the shape. The shape is here. So you can also extract this information out of the cell. And you also find the restraints that we define the ambiguous restraints to the shape. And these are the restraints that were defined for the cofactor. So it's really a certain file. It's a good reference of what you have been doing. If you were to publish something out of uh, the work that you have been doing, this is a file that you could provide as a supplementary material. Okay, so we are here running. Uh, so let's move to the final thing, which will be the analysis of the. So we're not going to wait for this one to finish. I actually some before that uh, did complete. It's here. So this one was uh, submitted a little bit before. And you see, you have the result page. But this is also available from the tutorial. So if you click on the pre page here, I'm going to open it in new. So this is accessible to all of you, also if you are not registered. So some general information, citation of ad hoc, citation of uh, the projects that are fine, all of this, including uh, by Excel, if you are happy and unhappy with our portal, so we always like feedback from users. And then if you, uh, since we set the analysis to norm, this is by default, it does 10, the top 10 model. So what we have here reported is the top 10 model. So cluster one will be the first, uh, the top ranked model. Cluster two is the second best ranked model and you see the, the scores. So the scores of the second and first one are in this case, are the first digit. Uh, and then, uh, well, someone asked about how is it compared methods. I just showed that at the beginning of the tutorial, and it's also in the uh, paper, actually. So this is the story here. What we are comparing here is this protocol to bomb docking with the other methods. We are doing fully unbound docking. We're generating conformation from strings. If you look at the best model that we generate in terms of quality, is the shape model. And this is what Surflex gets, but it's using the formations from the crystal structure of the complex. So that's a not fair comparison. But still, you see that in terms of quality, we are doing better than many others, starting from unborn structures and uh, from while well, here the other starts from crystal structures. And if you look at the top one, or, uh, we are close percent with our shape protocol. Uh, bolt and glide do slightly better, but again, this is bond docking. There is no conformational changes while we are doing bond docking. So again, it's not a fair comparison, but I say that it's very competitive with the other method, considering that we are doing unbound docking. We don't have the data for the other methods. Back to the result page. So here you have uh, basically uh, 10 models. You can even on the portal directly visualize the model. Let's move it back. So you see the shape is drawn here, but the ligand is not shown. So a line representation to start seeing the ligand. It's a quick check of what's happening there. And if you scroll to the bottom of the page, you have a vision of the, of the results. You find four versus um, fraction of common contacts. For small ligand, this is not so relevant. RMSD at the interface, this is more relevant where you see the top 10 model and you see all models, you see there are some models that have a very high clashes. You cannot really see what's happening here. But the active plots, so you can zoom in if I want to know, okay, what's happening here. You can zoom in here, okay, the ad hoc scores and the RMS, the phase between the ligands. You get the same for dissolvation energy, Van der Waals energy, electrostatic You can see here that there are different sets of solutions, some are and others. And you also have here a, a representation of the results, again, because of 
because that have high value, this plot don't fantastic, but you can zoom in on what's happening here and you will get a better view of things. Okay. So uh, what we can do is to visualize uh, those structure and actually we have been doing compared to the reference complex. Okay. So the server allows you to download all the clusters. So you can download the here. If you download this, you get models from the rigid body docking and the refinements. And you will find here 320 models per stage. Um, if you're just interested in downloading the cluster and click on uh, uh, this, which will download all the cluster files. Okay. And now we can basically compare those to our, uh, to our reference, to which we know the answer. So I'm going to use PyMol to do that comparison. So I'm going back to my work directory. X, uh, I need to extract. Okay, I've extracted, so I just generated out 10 clusters, and now I'm going to uh, basically load those 10 clusters by mole with the answer. Just see how well did we do it. So I'm going to remove uh, anything that we don't want. I'm going to align all the models to the protein to the receptor. In PyMol, you can copy paste the top part of the PyMol command window if you are not familiar with it. The RMS appearing here at RMSD only on the protein side. I'm going to hide the shape, zoom on the ligand. Okay. So now we see here in green the top 10 by ad hoc using this protocol and in white reference structure basically the complex that we are trying to reproduce and you see that so the, the you can see that all top 10 models are very very similar uh, we have a very nice uh, fit here and there is a little bit of a difference here and we can how much in terms of rms ddcs but basically the problem worked extremely well uh, i hope to have convinced you of that and this is another view that you find here. Uh, basically, now you can calculate the RMSD of the ligands, basically, and we use again a, a RD kit to do that. So we fit on the protein interface of the binding side interface, and we calculate the ligand RMSD um, compared. So you can only do that if you know the answer. So do that if you don't have profit, uh, which is a useful software to do RMSD calculations, you can do the fitting in and then uh, export the ligand. So I'm going to use it because I have everything installed on my laptop. So. And you see here, so basically what RDKit is telling me after fitting on the interface in is that the RMSD of the ligand, the reference structure is 0.74 angstrom. Okay, so the difference, this, shift that you see here in some orientation of league and this point for extra so i think that's an extremely nice uh, uh, result okay so as an illustration of basically this uh, shape based protocol so what we've been doing is going quite fast over part if you are interested in doing more of protocol everything is described here as well this was very much ligand specific uh, showing you the latest and most uh, performance we have for small molecule now. Uh, if you are interested in protein modeling, the other proteins, if you are interested in peptide modeling, look at the protocol with the tutorial, which is part of this, edu this master course. Uh, so you can get a lot of, of results there. See. Uh, okay, one well, question. What Good score. Uh, so, score are comparable between different runs, but they will depend on the data that you put in. The 
runs of the same system, you should be able to compare the scores. You cannot move the restraint energy from your comparison if you want. But the scores, well, the scores of different leakers, the same protein are probably okay, but this is not correlating usually very well with binding affinity. Okay, so you have to be careful there. What will be a good score? Uh, no value which tells you what is a good score. I know that Autodoc, for example, generates uh, bio energies in KCAL per mole. Delta G do that. Most score have arbitrary units. And uh, you cannot really, comp if you comparing the score, another protein with another ligand, you cannot say this one is, bind is better than the other one binds better. Of course, this is energetics that we're calculating, but if we claim this is correlating with binding affinity, this will be a false claim. It's not. And any software that tells you that is putting a claim which is probably not validated. And if you want to know more about that, go look the D3R grand channel, where also uh, a challenge of predicting binding affinities and ranking ligands, and you would see that it's very hard with binding affinities, or you have to do fancy free energy methods, assuming that your binding poles are correct in first instance. Um, so that's much more work. So, so be careful in interpreting docking score of any software in terms of binding affinities. Are there any other questions? It's uh, exactly 4.30. I realize it was a formation in a short time, but I guess you, you got a, a feeling and do. Yes, and uh, we are having a recording of uh, all the sessions put on the web later, so people can watch them at speed again. Uh, okay, so if there's nothing more, thanks again, Alexander and uh, Rodrigo in the chat also for uh, for the very nice uh, session and uh, everyone uh, as uh, you know from the now that we've uh, covered hpc in general molecular dynamics free energy calculations and molecular docking tomorrow we'll continue with uh, looking at the quantum mechanical aspects of uh, your simulations so it will be a, a very nice uh, follow follow up of the Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening, and we'll talk tomorrow. Okay. Bye, everyone. Enjoy Bye. the remaining of the school. Yes.